Welcome to the 3BA podcast, where bourbon boners and being awesome isn't just a catchy tagline. It's categories in which we discuss different topics every single day. My name's Garrett, and I'm going to be your host along this unique journey through the bourbon and whiskey craze, men's health, quite frankly, human's health, and everything that life throws at you in between. For the first time, I made some announcements last week. We're changing it up, and quite frankly, it's a great change because somebody's got to make this podcast look a little better. To my right, your new Saturday co-host, Miss Laura herself. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. Mrs. Laura. Mrs. Laura. Yes. How Mrs. are you Laura. doing? I'm doing great. Yeah? Yeah, I'm doing wonderful. You're a little nervous? This is your first time? Maybe a little bit. A little but bit? I, I have a feeling we'll figure out a way to eat. Yeah, I, a you, bit, yeah. I, I love that you just jumped right into that. <laughs> I want to talk about a little bit what today is, what we are going to make it. I want to, I want to tell the people, the viewers, the listeners, I tell them all about you. This is your episode. This is your introduction to the podcast. I'm actually very happy about it. I'm going to tell a quick story, but before I do that, it is a tradition now that not everybody does, but I know that you will enjoy. We have to pour something. And even before we pour something, you're going to see some new glasses here on the bar. These were a gift, already Great. getting gifts for the podcast and, and maybe for me specifically. But that's all right. It's for the podcast. That's what I'm going to say. These not only are etched and engraved, but they also have Lego pieces indented on the side. For those who have watched any episodes further than just week number one or week number two, we're on to week number three these are a very, very, very great addition to the bourbon bar here in the basement. The Nickerson. It's actually called the Nickerson. We're calling it the Nickerson. Okay. All right. Well, I think they look great. Well, I, I think so too. Today, because it's your first episode, we're going to do something mm -hmm. special. Now, what they are going to learn about you here in a little bit, bourbon isn't your forte. You are into a different avenue, which we'll talk about, okay. that I detest, to be very honest <gasps> with you. Actually... We'll, we'll get into that. But today, special pour day, I'm going to pour something that I know that the bourbon heads out there and all the fanatics are going to really like. I'm putting it on the bar. You can zoom in if you want. We'll take a picture of it. We'll edit it in. This is a very special pour. This is Woodford Double Double Oaked. Okay. Have you ever heard of such a thing? Double Double Oaked? Yes. There's a second no. double, a double no, double, if you will. I know your feelings towards double oaked. I, yeah. So, so I'm gonna say this. This is the 2019 version. It comes in a 375 milliliter bottle. It has gotten so popular that people stand in line almost overnight waiting to get their small bottles. They've now mm. limited it to four, I think it is, because it sells out so quickly. This is exactly what it sounds like: double oaked Woodford into another first use oak barrel. Delicious. Okay. Like it. Super sweet. You would think double, double oaked. You'd be extra sweet. It is not. Oh. It is a very, very, very delicious bourbon that has some kick to it. And I think of all people, you will appreciate this kick. But while I'm pouring, here's what I would like to ask you. Okay. I just said that your forte is in something different. Why don't you tell the people why I am be not begrudgingly. I am completely <laughs> open to it. <laughs> Bringing your expertise to light, why don't you tell the people what you are passionate about? I am very passionate about craft beer. Craft beer. Yes. What got you into craft beer? Oh, funny enough. We'll, we'll call it party math. Okay. That's what we'll call it. Sure. Um, I started drinking craft beer when I was 19, actually. So I got a little head start. It was all non-alcoholic. All non-alcoholic, mm -hmm. um, obviously. Yeah. And there might have been an establishment I went to that I won't say what it is, but <laughs> Probably um, for, their, for their sakes. Yeah. Um, and they happen to always have craft draft pitcher specials. Oh, okay. So party math. Mm -hmm. It was the most alcohol for my buck. Oh, so did I like okay. IPAs at the time? God, no. Okay. I don't think I've ever met a person that tasted an IPA for the first time and said, wow, this is so good. I still don't say that. And a lot of people don't. <laughs> uh, anyway, though, I powered through. Okay. I, what do they say? You have to try something seven times before mm -hmm. you like it. Mm -hmm. 
definitely tried it more than seven times. And um, before I knew it, by the time I graduated, I was seeking out double, triple quads if I could, which you don't see those that often. I, you see yeah. triple IPAs yeah. pretty frequently. And that's kind of what started my journey into craft beer. Okay. So you got into that. You, you just said a whole bunch of stuff that mm -hmm. I don't know a lot about. I know enough to tell you that I know what a double and a triple IPA is. Mm hmm never in my life have I actually I take that back I think I've tried a double IPA once and started to chew my beer as I was trying to swallow it uh but you said a quad I, at some point in time there's going to be an episode we'll let the people know there's going to be an episode where you and I oh, are going to do a beer craft beer tasting Oh, I can't believe that oh, we're going to do that, but we wait. are, we are definitely going to do that. So there's going to be an interesting episode where we partake. But before we do anything else, I think it is only right that on your first episode, your welcome episode, if you will, we cheers and we say welcome and I hope you enjoy. Mm. Tell me what you got. You don't have to give tasting notes. Mm. I'm just that's give me a, so, that's give me got a, some. It's got some bite on the back it end. It does, but it goes down a lot easier than I thought it would. Okay, I can appreciate that. I do think it's very sweet, though. It is. It's very sweet. It's got a. It's got a lot of flavor. the The second, I guess it would be the, the double of the double oaked, which is hard to follow if you really. I think mm -hmm. it's. I think it's, in a new barrel twice. So okay. original barrel, new barrel is double oaked. Original new original barrel, new barrel, new barrel is double double oaked. Even though it's that would be quad, right? So is that no, it's three, right? It is. Yeah, three barrels. Mm -hmm. Three. Even though double double would insinuate four, but yeah. Anyways, with <laughs> <laughs> schematics, yeah, you, know, you know, we're what it doesn't matter. We're semantics, yeah. semantics, schematics, semantics, semantics. Yeah. Anyways, back to you. This is what this episode is about. This is about your foray into this podcast, what you're going to bring. And I'm going to tell a very quick story, and then I'm going to ask you some other questions. You had come over and had poured some beverages and tried, for, for a lot of people that I know, you were, you were pouring drinks, you were mixing drinks, you've been in the industry for a very long time. How long have you been in the industry? You say very long time. It's actually only been four years. Really? Only four years. It feels a lot longer. Okay. I've only been working in the industry for four years, but I've been rather involved in learning about the industry for, I'd say, eight. Okay. That, actively. Yeah. Actively learning. So yeah. when I entered, I was probably about four years in. Sure. Okay. No, I, I'm saying mm -hmm. your knowledge goes beyond four years of official capacity the eight years, like you said, learning, I, I, mm -hmm. I remember talking to you about that. And then obviously you're getting your start when you're out of college and mm -hmm. drinking some IPAs. But that being said, you've been, you've been doing this a long, you've been doing it longer than most people. You've been in the beer, mm -hmm. let's call it the beer category or the beer scene a lot longer than even, I mean, yeah, I've been drinking beer since I was in college too, but not, not the craft variety. Do I find, do I find a lot of them interesting and yeah, I've, you're going to, I'm sure, open my eyes to a lot of good mm -hmm. beers. I'm completely okay with that, to be honest with you. Um, also, that being said, because this is your first episode, there's a reason why we, and I say we, some of the other hosts that you've seen, all brought you up. And and the story is, is just quite simply this, and this is a little pat on your back here. You were, you just came in, you were mixing drinks, you were... You were trying to make me the best old fashioned I've ever had. And you were bound and determined to make it the right way, the proper way. And, and you made, you made drinks for one of our other hosts, Nick, who's on Thursdays. You, uh, you met and talked to another host who is on Fridays. You met, uh, Johnny and the, the story goes like this. Johnny said, listen, we need to pivot and move this thing in the right direction. We need to step outside of just the manly part of it. We need to bring in some other perspectives. And you were the very first person that we discussed to bring in. And lo and behold, fast forward, if you will, a couple weeks, 
we decided to talk and ask you to do this. And here, here we are. We're we're three weeks into the official podcast, and you're on. You're on. You're in. You're in. At least I think. I mean, I'm here. <laughs> you are. If you keep pouring drinks like <laughs> this, I think I'll stick around. That's, that's a start. <laughs> so, so tell me this. Uh, you got into the industry. You got into beers. What what are you passionate about with with these beers? Is it the is it the hops that you're after, or is it a certain flavor profile? Are you just hey, I want to try the new thing, or are you actively going out around Ohio? By the way, they have this uh, brewery tour thing, right? Isn't there a brewery Bible or what? What do they oh, call it? The, the passport. Yeah, it's a, it's more like a passport. Yes. Yeah, and so they are, have them for Columbus, correct. Cincinnati. Yeah. So is that? So tell me. I guess that's where I'm asking. So tell me more about your passion. Is it? Is it the? Hey, I want to try the new things because you obviously know what you like. Yep. Or is it to just check off the list? Tell me. Go into that a little bit more detail. It's actually none of that. Okay. It's uh, none that's of that. perfect. I'm glad I asked. So, interestingly enough, yeah, I love I love beer. I sure. love trying new beer. Of course. I enjoy the variety mm-hmm. that there is. Yeah. Uh, but it actually all boiled down to the community aspect mm. and just the overall energy and vibe that you get when you're in a tap room. And I also have this very deep appreciation. Uh, I don't have this number written down. I know it's a very high number, more than 50%. I want to say it might be over 70 or 80% okay. of head brewers and taproom owners. There's no traditional training. They started oh. like they, they started as home brewers mm-hmm. and there's a certain passion and love that comes along with that. And you feel that when you're in a tap room. And you feel it when you talk to the brewers and you talk to the beer tenders and when you see the people there and the regulars, it's just an overall like good vibe. And that's what I was drawn to. Okay. Everyone I've met in the industry, I, a lot of them I've have become good friends. They've been coworkers. Uh, you don't get tired of talking shop. And that's really cool. It means a lot um, to be in that industry and to see other people enjoy it as much as you do. So it has, yeah, good tasting beer is a nice perk, but that's not really the reason why I fell in love with it. I'm, I, I'm just I'm being <laughs> quiet because I'm, I'm listening to you because your, your passion and what you just described to me is how I feel about what you see behind you. So very similar. That's what I'm, That's why I'm glad you're here. I'm actually very, I'm just, you just caught me off guard. I was very impressed. I, I feel the same way and I feel as passionate about bourbon as you just described about your brewers. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy that you just said that they don't even have training. There's no real formal classes. Mm -hmm. I found very similar instances in the bourbon community and the, in the Mm -hmm. distilling of spirits community. It's almost a, oh, Hey, I was an apprentice and I'm putting up quote fingers Mm -hmm. here. I, I went and, and followed behind, you know, some of the, the big names that you mm-hmm. see that have, have been distilling their spirits for, I, I mean, I guess it's safe to say hundreds of years, but it's, you're, you're get, you're getting these, these distillers, craft brewers, even mm-hmm. to your point, who just start small and they stumble upon a recipe, um, a variety uh, let's call it the right strain of hops in your case or the right strain of grain in my case. And they just form a product that works. I'm, I'm just listening to you talk about that. I, I've, I've heard that story. I, I've lived that. I, I experienced that in the bourbon community. So if you, you know, you're not only beer. Let, let me, let no. me back up a little bit. You're not only beer. I'm, I'm saying that because I think at some point you're going to be our resident beer expert. <laughs> not, you're just going to get that title. Um, but you're also you you're in spirits. You're 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 and I say the industry for those who may not understand what I'm saying by when I say the industry, you are in the service industry. You are you are currently involved with a tap room somewhere. I will leave that out for now, unless yeah. you, you know, we can talk about it later. But you're in it, you're currently essentially running it. You're the you're the GM of a tap room and Correct. you you're not just beer products you have spirits you have a full bar 
Correct. So you have gotten into, and I and I jokingly talked about this, you've gotten into making spirits, different cocktails. Uh, well, I'm going to challenge you a little bit. What's the one thing, not the one thing, what's the type of cocktail that I do not like? That you do not yeah, like? Yeah, the type, just the general type. You're talking about the liquor that's in it? No, the type. I'm putting you on the spot here. You are putting me on the spot here. I do not like smoked anything. If you smoke my old fashioned, I'm going to, I'm just going to politely sip on it and then try to enjoy it. And then I would rather just have it not smoked. That's good to know. I, I just, I don't it's like, sm- I don't like smoked. I don't like smoked drinks. I, I don't either. Yeah. But a lot of people do. They do. <laughs> they it's do. The, it's, it's popular. The new, yeah, it's the new trendy thing. It is. It's the new, here, light my light my already woody <laughs> liquor and put more wood flavoring into it. So the way it was explained to me sure. was the smoke is really more of an aromatic. And you also have to be very mm. careful that you don't, when you're infusing the smoke into You don't bruise your bourbon. Okay. So that you don't ruin the flavor, but it should be a proper smoke should be enhancing the bourbon, okay, rather than completely changing the flavor. Can I ask? Yeah, I'm glad we're talking about this. I just I'm curious. Do you, when you're enhancing a bourbon, at least this is my thought process. I'm completely off your. I'm deferring to you. That's why I'm asking. Are you swirling the bourbon to open it up? Because a lot of people say that it's like a wine, right? Mm-hmm. You swirl a wine. I'm not saying bourbon is wine, but you get what I'm saying. You kind of swirl your bourbon. A lot of people who do tastings and reviews on podcasts and things, they'll swirl, they'll sniff, they'll, oh, it hits the nose this way and different things. So when you're smoking an old fashioned, logic would lead me to believe that you're swirling and opening up that bourbon so that the smoke will enhance that. Is that what you're doing? Or is it, from what I've seen, I'm not saying you, I've seen other people, they're just covering it. They're not, they're not doing anything with the bourbon. So I see that a lot too. Okay. And I think that is due to how quick it is. Sure. However, there, there's there's more than one way to smoke. Of course. And I've seen there's, the ones yeah. where you put, I forget the correct term, but you put the glass bowl over it and sure. you smoke it that way. And you're not mixing. Yeah. I was uh, at one point trained where you actually pull the smoke into a cup and you swirl it. Gently. Sure. That's what I say. Like, don't bruise the bourbon. Okay. Uh, you swirl it gently eight to ten times, and that's it. So, yes, you okay. should be opening it up some with so, a gentle swirl. So, that that makes more sense to me. In fact, I just, not that I had an epiphany, but you saying that makes it, I would like to try it differently next time. So, I've just had an experience too many bourbon cocktails smoked cocktails that are just not, they just, they don't hit my palate properly. And if it does enhance the flavor, I'm, listen, I'm all about it. And hence, hence, it's a line from the movie. Anyways, I just think that, no, I, I think that it should, I think it, I don't hate it. I don't prefer it. Let's put it that way. Okay. So if I were to, if I were to get a cocktail, it would be not smoked. Um, all of that to say, you know, and I'm sorry we're going off on these tangents, but that's what this is about. We're just getting to know you. I love that you have that expertise. So tell me a little bit more about what your what you eventually want to do. So I'm considering you the expert here. What eventually is it that your your goal to either be is it is it a brewer? Do you want to? I mean, I know you're a GM. Do you want to open up your own tap room? Do you want to brew your own? type of beer what's your what's your i don't know tell me what's your future what's your goal what's your what you're shooting for so one thing about me is i always like to have options have multiple different pathways okay uh, once upon a time i was a very rigid person and change did not work well for me mm-hmm. well reality hits and i am sure. no longer that way so there's multiple answers to your question okay uh, would I be happy being a brewer? Very possible. Okay. I have everything to homebrew. Mm-hmm. I'm ready to it. I'm very much looking forward to it. And All right. I'm hoping to bring some of that here. All right. But there, uh, currently where I am as a GM, I'm sure. with a wonderful company uh, that has a lot of opportunity. Mm-hmm. And as they expand and grow, I would love to be that beacon of education. Oh, so okay. in, this, in this specific scenario, 
whether that be like a title might be like beverage director. Okay. Uh, but creating the training, being involved in product selection, cocktail creation, specific for a brand or a territory. Yeah. That I could see myself stepping into one of those roles. So would you be promoting a product along those lines, but with the education or would you be promoting a process? Would you be, would you be training other brewers? Would you be training staff? What, what's your, what's your education piece that you're looking into? I'm, it, I am curious. It I would be know. creating of training materials. Okay. It would be presentation of those oh, okay. materials. Uh, but then it also lends itself to looking at each location specifically and making calls that are best because when it comes to beer and cocktails, every location is different. Okay. Like yeah. in, let's say a metropolitan area, mm -hmm. you're probably going to see IPAs moving pretty well. Yeah. However, you go into maybe a slightly more rural area where I'm currently located, they actually trail on the trend. Okay. But light lagers, on the other hand, are ahead of the average, generally. What about Bud Light? Okay. We don't can't care. Can't, I'm, I'm just I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> but we do. That That's a very common question, though. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, they're looking for something familiar. Of course. So, I don't know how much you want me to go into this right now, but... I, have at it. I... One thing, and I, I've been having this discussion a lot recently, because mm -hmm. there's so many breweries and tap rooms that are currently popping up. Sure. And it doesn't feel like they've slowed down. No. And I think there's people, a new one. I feel like there's a new one every week. There, there really is. And I get the question a lot, well, what do you think makes a good brewery? And I'm not going to go into all of the aspects, sure. I think, but I think a big part of it is consistency yeah. and having... Core beers that the public are very familiar with. Product. There's, you gotta have a consistent product. Yes, and there's a there's a reason why people order Bud Light or any other do, popular domestic. Or we get the question a lot, like, what do you have that's like a Blue Moon? And it's because it's familiar. People know exactly what they're gonna get. It's why some people when they're traveling or on vacation still get McDonald's. Yeah. Because it's familiar, they know exactly what to expect. I I get that. I I'm. I'm, I'm learning too. I'm learning right now. And, and I didn't even know that there needed, I mean, it makes sense in any aspect of any business. I mean, if I'm looking at the 30,000 foot view, there always needs to be education. But now that you're saying it that way, I guess it never occurred to me that you're going into these, you're going into these new, let's call them new breweries or brewers or, or in, in your case, you're at a, you're at a company that has grown pretty rapidly and they are now popping up tap rooms with their product and you're right I'm not going to, I can't get a I can't get a Bud Light where you work that's because it's not your product you're selling your product so that does take a little bit of a of a different spin on hey look when you're here this is what we have and then you have to educate right so you have to educate staff you had you have to educate get bar staff wait staff kitchen staff you have to Oh, hey, I hear you have a beer cheese. What did you use? Well, we used our beer. Yeah. Like, I'm just, I'm thinking out loud, but yeah, you're right. It's, it's a, uh, that's a learning curve. Yeah. I have, I have another one and we're going to be talking to you a lot more. There's going to be a lot of different things, little different topics and, and categories that we've already planned out. We've sat down and we've actually talked about what we want to, what we want to discuss. And there are going to be some out there that everybody are going to be excited about. Uh, I might just, my one last question is, so what were your thoughts coming on to at at the time and we're talking about even more changes but an all male focused podcast let's just call it what it is we started off i mean it's only been a couple weeks we've already pivoted a few times but an all male run hosted podcast i mean it's just another day for me <laughs> I, I've been, uh, <laughs> the degree that I got in college. Got it. Male the, studies. The, Just kidding. Go ahead. The, uh, my first, we'll, we'll say real job, my first mm -hmm. desk job mm -hmm. out of college and even being in the beer industry, yeah. it's highly male dominated. Oh yeah. If anything, this is my comfort zone. All right. Fair so, enough. And, but 
I think you guys can maybe use the womanly. Listen, aspect. there I've been told that many times, and there's probably going to be a lot of people making comments, and we're, we welcome those, by the way. Welcome comments and questions. Um, if there's anything you want to know uh, appropriately about Laura, we will be more than happy. I think she would be too to, to elaborate. Um, but we're looking forward to it too. I, I'm going to speak for the other for the other hosts. It is nice to have another perspective. I am I I, I do I'm not pigeonholing you into the beer. I joked about that, but I can already tell that you're passionate about it. It already just came through in, in this very first episode. So. Uh, with that, I guess I just want to tell some of the people out there, she'll, we'll be doing lives. We have some plans for lives. We'll be doing a panel where all the hosts will be all together. There's a, there's a lot of a lot of cool things coming down the road and plans for the 3 day podcast. I always do a sign-off. So I'm putting you on the spot. I did not warn you at all about this. If you want to think of something, the generic cheers is always good, but I think you're a little bit more unique than that. I already know that you're going to work on it, and I probably threw you for a little bit of a loop, springing it on you right before we were going to end the podcast. But on the bourbon cast, the bourbon cast, the bourbon days, I always do drink it how you like it. On the days now with Johnny, I do stay strong. It was stay stiff, but now it's stay strong. And on the Being Awesome days, mm -hmm. I have just, I haven't perfected it yet, but I just say stay awesome. Now, this is your moment to shine. I'm also not putting you on the spot. We can work on it. Yes, but for you your are. first for your first episode, I'm going to say stay awesome. Drink good beer. <laughs> with, no, I'm not done. Drink good beer with great people. Oh, hey, cheers. Welcome to the 3B podcast. I'm happy to be here.